It's also easier if we actually have someone under the water because yeah. she can use them as the reference. Yeah, they would just like wave and be like, that way, and you point yeah. and see coral and be like... The Great Barrier Reef is a natural wonder of the world. It is absolutely gigantic and extremely complex. The complexity is what gives us these massive challenges on how to manage and look after the Great Barrier Reef. This how-to video is going to show you how to set up a survey technique using the Eye in the Reef Tourism Weekly Monitoring and which will show us the finer differences and changes that we see throughout many different habitats on the reef. So what you're going to need for this project, you are going to need your Tourism Weekly Monitoring Slate, you're going to need an underwater camera. If your camera is not waterproof, make sure you pick up the housing. You are going to need an underwater GPS. Again, if it's not waterproof, make sure you grab the housing. And finally, you are going to need a slate. So the main thing to remember with your camera is to always check your settings. Every camera is a little bit different and taking a few minutes to check that your settings are correct means that you will be set up for the day. Make sure your battery is fully charged and in your camera. If you have any spare batteries, bring them with you as well. Then make sure your SD card is empty, doesn't have any photos from previous trips, and just to be safe, format it as well. Then ensure that it's in your camera. So first thing to check is that your date and time is correct. It's really important for us later on. And then make sure that your date stamp is off. Most cameras have an underwater setting. Put it on this mode to make your life a little bit easier. Then think about exposure. The ISO setting should be on auto, and shutter speed should also be on auto. Most cameras in auto mode should be metering in evaluative or matrix, but it's good to double check these settings just in case. Make sure that your flash is turned off. This will ensure that you limit backscatter and overexposure. Regarding white balance, put your camera into underwater mode. If you don't have an underwater mode, just put your white balance on auto. And for GoPros, also put it in auto and ensure that your red filter is off. Try to put your camera on its highest resolution in JPEG rather than in RAW. And if possible, have it more than 15 megapixels. When you're taking your photos, make sure that you're shooting in landscape rather than in portrait. And if you're using a GoPro, make sure that your settings are in landscape lock, not off. If it's available on your camera, make sure stabilization mode is on. This will ensure your images are a little bit sharper. Before you jump into the water, make sure that you clean your camera lens, as well as the inside and the outside of your housing. If you have one, put a silicone pack or a desiccant into your underwater housing. This will ensure that your images do not fog up. Every GPS system is different. So for this one, what we're going to do is head into Setup. We're going to head down to Position Format. In Position Format, you want to make sure that you're on WGS84. Head back out, into Tracks, and in your Tracks, you want to make sure that you are recording your track. Whether you want to record it and show it on the map or not show it, that's completely up to you. So we're going to on this one we're going to put on do not show and then you want to make sure that your recording interval is at the smallest number possible. When you registered for the Eye in the Reef Tourism Weekly Monitoring methodology you would have registered a site for that, for that weekly monitoring. Now some crew have a set path that they follow when they're doing their survey, some don't. What we suggest when trying to set up your photograph transects is to choose a location that best represents your reef location, your reef site, and that you know really well. Because what we've got to ensure is that these photographs are repeatable and that it is consistently done. Before you jump in, turn the GPS on and take a photograph of the screen so the timestamp is clear in the photo. This will allow us to sync the GPS and camera time. So if you're not with a Reef Teach staff member at a new site, it'll probably take you an hour to an hour and a half, preferably with two people. Some of the important lessons that we've learnt is to choose a location that is repeatable. When it comes to choosing your, your route, distance doesn't matter. It can be a small area, it depends on your site very much, but you don't need to travel miles to be choosing your photos. As long as you've got a good selection and a good idea of the area. 
To ensure the repeatability of your photos, find landmark features that you can find again. Things that are easy to find, such as crevices or bumps in the reef. Try and avoid pretty corals or branching corals, things that may not be there if a cyclone or a storm came. Find things that will be there over a long period of time. When you're repeating your survey, you don't need your GPS, that was just for the setup. What you do need is your camera, make sure that the date and time are correct again on your camera and all the settings are as before. You need your weekly monitoring slate and you need your site map if you think you need it. Before you jump in, make sure you fill out the top section of your weekly monitoring site, take a photo of that and then you can use that for the rest of your survey. The whole thing shouldn't take more than around 10 minutes if you know your site. Reef Teacher Happy to act as your mentors for this project and please feel free to contact us at any time with any questions. Thank you for being part of the Eye on the Reef Photo Point Enhancement Project. Yeah.